For this build I'm going to use some 18mm hardwood plywood which was left over from a commission. I started by cutting the plywood to smaller, more manageable pieces. Then I could rip the pieces accurately at the table saw. Here I'm cutting the front and back panels for the houses. I wanted to cut a rebate at the top and bottom of each panel, so I first marked up the thickness of the plywood onto the edges, then I could line that mark up with my table saw blade to set the fence, and then I set the blade height so that it would cut through about three quarters of the way through the plywood, and then I made the first cut on both sides. Then I could set the blade height again to cut away the waste, I set the fence, and made the cuts with the workpieces held upright this time. This is a little bit of a risky cut, but I made sure that the workpiece was held firmly against the fence and took the cuts nice and slow. Here I'm marking up a centre point so that I can draw an arc onto the panels, and I used my beam compass for that. I have a video showing how I made this beam compass, and I'll link to that in the description box if you're interested. I could then square off the arc on both sides. I wanted to cut out the shapes to both panels at the same time to save a bit of time, so I positioned them together flush using a speed square with both of the rebate joints facing downwards. Then I drove a couple of screws through where the waste material would be to stop them moving around, and I went over to the bandsaw to make the cuts. The reason that I faced both rebate joints downwards was to give me the cleanest cuts possible at the bandsaw for what would be the outside faces of the cat houses. With that done I then needed to cut bottom panels for the houses and also some top rails and you'll see how all of these pieces come together shortly. I applied glue to the rebate joints and then used my parallel clamps to position everything. I also used an F clamp at the top of the assembly. While the glue was drying I'd start making some tapered legs for the houses and I had these off cuts from when I made the desk tidy smartphone stands in a recent video. I like to find uses for my off cuts so these were still in the workshop. All I needed to do was square up one side at the table saw, then I marked up how thick I wanted the legs to be. I could then line up my mitre saw blade with the mark, made a sharpie mark on the bed of the saw and then I could make consistent cuts to form each leg. After a little sanding they looked great. I really like the sapili dark wood accents at the bottom of each leg, contrasting against the light oak colour. One other thing I could get on with while I was waiting for the glue to dry was to start cutting the cladding pieces and I'd use some 12mm MDF for that. After cutting the panels down to the size I wanted I tilted my blade to 45 degrees and made a series of cuts moving the table saw fence by 4cm in between each cut to give me lots of slats with the same angle on each long side. I'd also need a roof cap for the very top of the houses so after cutting another 45 I marked up the width I wanted and then I could flip the piece over to make the second cut. Once the glue was dry on the houses I removed all the clamps and started marking up where I wanted the legs to be positioned onto the bottom panels. I added glue and clamped them in place. It was important to place these far enough in so that I would later be able to drive in a screw. I'll show you what I mean by that shortly. After a couple of hours I removed the clamps, flipped the house over and then made some marks on the inside where to add screws so that they would be roughly in the centre of each leg to reinforce them. Here you can see that I had just enough space to be able to drill pilot holes and drive in the screws without the upright panels getting in the way of the drill and driver. I'm using countersink bits here that drill both a pilot hole and a countersink all in one go. And then I drove in the screws. 
I've made a bit of a silly mistake here. When I cut these rebates, I forgot that the cladding was going to be mounted to these edges. So there isn't really enough gluing surface to be able to attach the cladding. In hindsight, what I should have done is cut a housing joint to accommodate this piece, and that would have left this material here. So to fix this, I'm just going to glue in some pieces of plywood. I cut these filler pieces at the bandsaw and used some super glue to fix them in place quickly. It didn't look great, but as these won't be visible anyway, as they will be on the inside of the houses, it didn't really matter. Next I could get on with adding the cladding. The first part of the cladding I added was the roof cap, and I used wood glue to stick this to the plywood top rail. I made sure that the overhang was equal on both sides, and then drove in a few brad nails to secure it until the glue set. For the rest of the cladding, I was planning on using grip fill because it's a gap filling construction adhesive, and ordinary PVA wood glue is terrible at filling gaps. The problem I had was that this tube had been in my shed for a few months and it wasn't coming out of the tube easily even though the tube was brand new and sealed. But anyway, I persevered and managed to get enough of it out to glue the cladding onto one side. You can see here that the 45 degree cuts to the cladding pieces allows each piece to slip under the last. I used brad nails to hold them in place while the glue set. Trying to squeeze out the grip fill was really slowing me down so I ended up buying some different instant grab adhesive from a local shop and that worked much better. I then filled all the nail holes using some wood filler. I left it overnight and then I sanded all of the cladding at 120 grit. I sanded the ends of the MDF to get them smooth and I also rounded over the edges a little too. I wanted to paint the cladding and I had some grey paint which I'd mixed up a few months back using a mixture of black and white paints. I probably should have used a primer before applying the paint, but I didn't have any so I went straight for the paint and I didn't have any issues. I then spent a bit of time cleaning up the impact adhesive squeeze out. It was really hard by now so I could just cut it away with a knife. By the way, here you can see that the ends of the MDF had really soaked in all of that paint, and I'll need to work on that a bit more with the next coat of paint. To cut an entrance hole for the houses, I decided to make a template for the router. I didn't want to use a jigsaw because I don't think it would have given me a clean enough cut in the plywood. I marked up a circle onto a scrap piece of MDF, and then I hot glued that onto some plywood to double up the thickness. I could then cut out the circle at the bandsaw I also cut away some of the excess around the edges I then hot glued together the bandsaw kerf Then I marked up a centre point onto the front panel of the house I offered up the template making sure it was centred and then traced the circle I added some masking tape and then applied some hot glue on top and positioned the template lined up nicely with the circle that I'd marked out. So clearly I wasn't thinking straight when I put this template together because my router bit doesn't even touch the workpiece. So I shouldn't have doubled up this template, one piece would have been thick enough and now I need to prise this off and see if I can get it apart. Let's try that again. I'm using a template cutting bit here. You'll see that it has a bearing at the top to ride along the template. I cut a clearance hole using a hole saw. And then I took the first pass with the router. I cut the hole in three passes raising the router base in between each pass. This here is the last of the three passes and you'll see here that it's now cutting all of the way through the material. I could then remove the template and as you can see the masking tape which protected the front panel from the hot glue came off nice and easily. Next I re-sanded the ends of the MDF cladding and then I re-coated it with paint and this time the coverage was much better. I did some hand sanding to clean up the entrance hole and remove any sharp edges, but I found that the inside felt a little too rough, so I came back with my electric belt file to speed things up, 
and I just took some very light passes because this thing removes material extremely quickly. I then painted the inside of the hull to hide the end grain of the plywood and this added another nice grey accent to the houses too. I then denibbed the paint with 400 grit wet and dry paper to get it nice and smooth. I blew away the dust with my air blower. I added a top coat of water based varnish to protect the paint. I also varnished the front and back panels. Once that was dry I wet sanded again using 400 grit to denib the finish. I wiped away any dust and applied a final coat of varnish and this time I used acrylic spray varnish to get into all of the nooks and crannies between the cladding and seal everything off nicely. I added my maker's mark to the bottom of the beds and I also finished those with spray varnish too. Finally I wanted to make some simple cushions so after cleaning up my workbench I got some 25mm thick foam which I bought on eBay. I then marked up the size I needed. Usually I cut foam with a sharp knife but someone commented on one of my videos recently suggesting I cut it at the bandsaw so I thought I'd try that out and it worked really well. You'll see here that I'm cutting three pieces at the same time as I'm making three of these cat houses in this video. I'd wrap the cushions in some of this cream coloured fabric which came from some old curtains which I bought in a charity shop. I'm not very good at sewing, it's something that I want to learn more about someday but for now hot glue works great. This is only a cat house after all and none of this will be visible anyway. I folded the material over to create a hem and then I glued the fabric to the foam pulling it taut. I then folded the edges a bit like I was wrapping a Christmas present and glued them down too. And then I came back to glue down any loose edges. And that was the cushions done. 